Hi, this is Don McAllister and welcome to another edition of Screencasts Online. This week I'm going to show you the basics of editing video on your iPad or iPhone using LumaFusion. LumaFusion was awarded the 2021 iPad App of the Year by Apple and is a pro-level video editing app with all the features you might expect of a true desktop app. For this video I'll be covering just the basics to get you started rather than every in-depth feature available. So let's take a look at LumaFusion. Now for this video I've decided to use my personal iPad Pro to give us a bit more screen real estate, although LumaFusion is perfectly fine on a smaller iPad or even an iPhone. I'm also using a smart keyboard with a trackpad so you can see the pointer on screen as I navigate through the user interface. So this is the default screen layout for LumaFusion. Uh, basically three main areas. We have a source area over here, we have a playback area here, and we also have a timeline area down here at the bottom. Well, I haven't created a project as of yet, but before we create our first project, let's go in and have a look at some of the settings. So I tap on this button down here to go into settings. Uh, first being our clip defaults. So I'm going to leave it with fill mode so that when we add a clip to our timeline, it will fill the frame. Uh, you can use fit, focus, and stretch as well. These are just some values for the length of time for photos, titles, and transitions that we might insert into the project. There is a ducking option. If you're not familiar with ducking, this is where you have two audio tracks, say a music bed and then a spoken vocal or narration track. And as the narration um, starts and stops, the music will automatically fade in and fade out so that it doesn't overwhelm the spoken audio track. Uh, we have a preferences option. So we have the new project defaults. So a frame rate, if you want to change the frame rate, we have the aspect ratio, lots of different things to choose from here. If I click on here, see four by three or cinematic, uh, anamorphic, etc. Then a color space. And then this option here, which is to adjust your project based on the first video clip added. And to be honest, this is the one that I tend to use. Normally all my source material is from the same camera or same iPhone. So basically it will take up the settings for frame rate and aspect ratio from the first clip that you add to your project. There is an option to show touches, although I'm using the accessibility option within iOS to actually show this red pointer. Uh, what else have we got? Oh, if you have an external drive, you can switch this on here to allow you to access media on external drives. Across to cleanup. So I've used this on this particular machine for a short while, so I haven't got many temporary files, but you can clean them up here if you want, also your cached media, etc. So you can clean up here if you're starting to run out of space, and then a help option. Now there are some great tutorial videos if you want to go into a bit more depth. There's also a good reference guide and access to custom support, etc. But I'm going to go ahead and just close that down, and let's go ahead and create our first project. If I just either tap here, or I can tap on this option here, but I'll go ahead and say plus. Right, so I'm going to give this, well, I'll leave it as uh, my project. The frame rate is going to be based on the first video clip, as well as the aspect ratio and also the color space. So I just tap on here, and that's my new project opened. Now, to close this project or to manage other projects, I can just go down to this icon in the bottom left hand corner. And this gives me a list of my various projects, only the one at the moment, of course. I could delete it from here as well, or duplicate it or download it, but I'm just going to go ahead and, in fact, just double tap to open it back up again. And before I start opening clips, if I just tap on this control down here at the bottom, that will hide my track controls. And then this button here will also hide my track volume controls. If I want to use an alternative layout rather than the default, I can just go across to this button here and there are six different presets. I can just click and select any one of these different alternative layouts. So really just pick the one that fits in with your particular style of working. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, stick with the default. If I want to make some minor adjustments, I can just grab on this handle here and just drag around to get it exactly as I want. But let's go ahead and leave it in this configuration. OK, time to add our first clips to our project. That's just a quick preview of one of this week's Apple related tutorials from Screencasts Online. Screencasts Online is your premium source of Apple related video tutorials. 
all of our members get access to brand new up-to-date tutorials each week, as well as unlimited access to our entire video archive full of Mac and iOS related tutorials. You can stream and download all of our videos on your Mac, iPad and iPhone, and even your Apple TV using the members only Screencasts Online Apple TV app. Membership also includes a complimentary subscription to the Digital Screencast Online monthly magazine, published each month and packed with videos, articles, reviews, as well as hints and tips covering all aspects of the Mac, iPad, iPhone, and all of the other fantastic Apple products. So, if you're ready to start getting the most out of your Apple devices, visit ScreencastsOnline.com today and become a Screencast Online member.